No. Because the glory of God is up, up. Up, up. You don't belong down there. You belong up there. So all things are yours. When you have this, your goals, your aspiration, when you know this, your plan, the things you want to get, you'll be thinking about great things and not small things. Because a man is like the way he thinks. You will know that wherever you are right now, it's not the bus stop. You will know I'm moving this place to the highest level. Why? Because it's your right to be there. Imagine having power over sickness. Before the fall of Adam, he had power over all of this. Adam's, Adam could control the elements. Adam could say rain fall, rain will fail. Rain don't fall, it will not fall. Just imagine a vehicle is about to hit you and you say stop. I'm just using all these pictures to inspire you to know that nothing is impossible with you. No wonder Jesus said, as many who believe, nothing shall be impossible. Jesus was not teaching them something new. He was the second Adam. He came to really tell them what the first Adam used to be like. Because these people now don't have any clue anymore what the first Adam used to be like. Because so many years has passed. Jesus came to remind us. To tell us about the higher life that God had in mind for us. The higher life. The life of glory. The life of power. The life of grace. The life of abundance. The life of continuous victory. The life of eternal life. Jesus, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Why is he talking about the abundant life? It's because we had it before. But before he said, he said but the, the enemy came to steal. He first of all told us, this guy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his agenda. So when you're making friends with him, just know this is what you're buying into. Because these people living at that time didn't have a clue of what went down in Eden. You need to understand redemption. You need to understand what redemption. If people understood what redemption and what salvation is all about, they will not reject it. They will not fight it. It is God coming down in the form of Christ to put us back to the Eden experience. That's what redemption is. To put us back in charge. What a life. Angels were not permitted to even dream of these privileges that God gave man. Angels were not permitted to even dream about it. These privileges to control life. To reign in life, to assess God's mind, to represent God, to answer God's kids, to control this earth, to share power with God, to have free will, to live in abundance. Angels had not such privileges. They were in the exclusive right. You know when they you read government say some, some, some powers are exclusive to the federal government. They were exclusive things that belongs to God and God can only share it with his children. Share it with you. God wanted to share it with you. So yesterday I woke up in the morning and I went to go and brush my teeth and I saw my son's my son's, uh, my first son's brush powerfully arranged on the bedroom. Is always doing it. So I pick it and I match them to his room. He was sleeping. And I woke him up. Don't be thinking this is over there. Every time you think this again, don't do it again. He said, Yeah. I left when I came back in the night. They say he went to my bedroom to brush his teeth. What kind of thing is this? He has a big bedroom. 
Oh, but he loved my, he loved my bedroom. I don't, there's nothing special in my bedroom. Uh, maybe that he feel like he, he was always saying it. I want to be like you, daddy. He's always saying it. The small one too will go and pick his shoe, all his load, all his property. No small picking property. We'll pack all of it. He will come to my room, put it on my shoe, put his shoe on my shoe, put some inside my wardrobe. The other day I came, all their books on top of my, what is this? We are sharing it with you, daddy. Yesterday I ended a fast and I got home. I was so hungry. I said, give me, as they give me food, that small one, he just arrived. Say he wants to eat. I don't like that kind of thing. First question I ask is, you never chop. No. You know, first of all, he said, okay, no, that was later in the night he said that one. So he just attacked the food. And I was thinking this food is going to be, let me just test the food and we are done. This guy continue eating the food, eating on the, the food, finish. If I had the remaining one, my wife picked it to give to him and I looked at her. The woman shop. Say, should I drop it? I don't worry, don't worry. They went and bring another food. He made sure he finished. Just imagine God sharing everything with us. Eternal life, power, grace, wisdom, everything, glory, everything he had, he shared with. You know, Jesus said, he said, for, for the glory the Father has, he has given to me. The same glory I'm sharing with you. So the idea was to share everything with us. No angel had that privilege. God wanted to share everything with us. And God still wants to share everything with us. You have no business remaining down. God wants you up there as his kid. Wants you up there. Have you heard that many say that the, pres the son of the president is ruling the country now? Your father can be the president and you are no. How can your father be king and you live as a, as a slave? It's over from today in the name of Jesus. The angels that try to dream about this kind of life, God cast them down straight up. Lucifer and his God, God they, that they thought about it, that we will rule, share glory with God. God sent them down. See, that's why the angels said, what is man that God is? They can't understand it. Do you really want to share your glory? Lucifer was the finest angel. You spend time making him in all his glory. You even allow him to walk in the midst of the circle of fire before you. The closest, one of the cherubs, the closest of angels to God's glory. The ones that got God's glory. The only man that was, that was, was, was the, the voice of heaven. Who sings your praise. He thought about it and you send them packing down. With no, rem with no opportunity to come back. But here is this dust that you turn into a man. You are sharing everything with him. So they said, what is man? Not who is man. What is this being? We have seen beings in our many years of staying with you. Because in heaven you see a lot of things. We have seen dispensations. God cannot, there is no limit to his age. He doesn't even have age. He's ageless. We have been with you for eternity. We have seen all there is to see. What is this thing? You even made him with the lowest version of anybody's body. There are angels that are, that are like, like, like machines. There are all kinds of angels with all kinds of body. Fierce creatures. Some have six wings. Imagine a six wing angel proposing to you. Some are just that, some are like wheels with rings all around them, eyes everywhere. Imagine that kind of person is your brother. The Bible said they excel in strength. Oh, they excel in strength. One angel can kill a whole nation with one, one sweep of his sword. One angel. 
The Bible told us of some, some revelations in the Bible. At one time, at, at one time, David did something, and before he said Jack, an angel has slew over 120,000 people. And God opened his eyes. The, the mighty guy is standing with one leg over there, one leg over, over a nation. You know, angels control nations. Angels. But God puts all of them under you. Did you get what I'm saying? Why do we have to obey this thing? God said you obey him because he's my son. Why does it have to be your son? We know when you are molding this thing. I told you angels don't know everything about God. Their, their wisdom are limited to their assignments. But they say God made one being that have access to all the wisdom of God. Remember the scripture. I am the vine. And you are the branches. God plugged man to his side. He can assess everything. God, everything God knew. God, man know, knew it. Everything God knew. Know everything. He could assess his mind. He brought the animals to him. He said, what will you call it? So I called this lion. He said, that's what I thought of calling it. That means he was assessing direct information. He wasn't doing dealing with Yasi. He had direct, no other being had such direct. See, you look at it, Jesus was always saying it. I and my father, we are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the father. Don't bother seeing the father. You have seen me, you've seen the father. You don't need to consult the father. I need to, you can't, the way the guy was talking, they say you are crazy. Even, most, even Moses could not claim that. Even Abraham could not claim that. That was the second Adam. That is whom he have come to restore you to be. He's restoring you. That's what redemption is all about. And from now, sickness have no power over you. Death has no power over you. Jesus defeated them. And then he, 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 he looked at them and said, Oh, death, where is thy power? Where is thy sting? Wait, 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 wait. I thought you were making mouth. Where is, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your power? They will no longer hold you down in the name of Jesus. The one that is with you is greater than that one that is in the world. So for he that is in me is greater. Hey, look at it. I heard one man of God say it yesterday and it amazed me. I was happy. He said, and here comes Moses before all the witches and wizards of Pharaoh. And their witchcraft could not bring down Moses. How can the witchcrafts of the witches of this world bring you down? Moses stepped in and said, this is what God said, I should say, ah, they brought out all their jars, all their witchcraft, they put it down. Their snakes came out. It was not cartoon snake. Those were real snakes. It's not the talking snakes. Those were real snakes. But the Bible says, and the, the Moses rod swallow all of them. From today, see before this series is over, you take it in your spirit. Nothing that is negative, nothing that is not of God will rule over your life in the name of Jesus. Even if there is anyone already, they are losing their influence over your life in the name of Jesus. Look at what she was saying. About that family. But that's how God will single you out. For by one man death came. Also by one man life is coming. And you are the one bringing that light in your family. Say I know who I am. Say I cannot be disadvantaged. For all things are mine. Say all things are mine. So now you see why our serving God and loving Jesus is a big deal. Sometimes we say, oh, what's the big deal? Every time Jesus is a, it's a big deal to us because what we lost in the first Adam will regain back in the second Adam. Not to live as those to be pitied, but to live as those who are in charge. That we are not even scared of death. We know now we have control over death. We will die the way God's people die. And you can see it in the Bible. 
when they are old and they have finished all their assignments, they will call their children, put things together, and they will bless them and sleep. That's what the Bible says. They will sleep. Not all, all these death, you're dying. All the body, they squeeze. When you can't die, they, they try to make you look like a human being because they suffer when you say die. I don't be like this. No, so everything. Hands on me. Yeah, you did something. No. We we'll sleep. Tell your neighbor we we'll sleep. We just talk to everybody, arrange everybody. You take this, you take this, take Canada, take America, take this, this, and put everything in order. Then he says, see you guys, see you guys, see you guys. You, you just sleep. I saw a video of one, one Christian like that, an old lady. I don't know how many of you saw it. She was about dying and she called the choir to be singing her favorite song. And she was singing that hymn with them and then Because the death of a saint is, 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 is celebration. There are some people that will, they will be in coma, not to, they will be in coma for almost three days. They are begging them, die now. <laughs> That's because what they are seeing, oh. Because when they are at the point of dying, what they are seeing is not easy. You are seeing all kind of things. But listen, you want to die and you are seeing heaven. Why will you be struggling to come back here? You just wave us goodbye quickly and then take your journey. Knowing fully well that you have settled this area. But we are not even afraid of death. But we are not even afraid of death. That is a big deal for us. The earth belongs to us. This space belongs to us. This wealth belongs to us. The throne of this, it belongs to us. See, the word poor, lack, need is an insult to our personality. Say it after me. The word poor, lack, need, sickness is an insult to my personality. God made us that way. This is why all creatures in heaven and earth cry every day at the fall of man. And they long seriously for us to be fully restored back. Because right now, everything is upside down. Everything is not the way God made it. There is chaos everywhere. There is disorderliness. That's why you have all these calamities everywhere. Because the one that is in charge is not supposed to be in charge. Everything is rebelling. Everything he touches destroys because he was not designed to rule. The devil was not created to be a ruler. Man was created for dominion. We know how to do that. He is not created. He was created. He's a good singer. Whatever it is. A good angel that can sing. I'm not even sure if he can, if he used to fight those days because we know those who are designed for fighting. Michael and co. Check the scripture. You never saw where Angel Michael came to tell somebody what God. If you see Angel Michael, no, somebody is about to die. Something is about to die. Michael has no business bringing good news. Who can tell me the angels that is in, in science, that's, that's in, uh, you know, uh, 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 entrusted with good news in the Bible. Gabriel. Any better news? Gabriel. Here you go, born. Gabriel. Zachariah. You go, Gepiki. Gabriel. He's a nice guy. Come and say, peace be unto you. That's not Michael. Michael come bawling and slapping somebody, killing somebody. He doesn't have time for all those. He doesn't have time for us. So every angel get their work. That's not Mike. Michael don't have time for peace and tree. I'm not. Though that was yesterday, no. What, what was that? What's that for Michael? That's Gabriel. So, you, I mean, you can have a conversation with Gabriel and even argue small, not Michael. So, 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 so the Gabriel spoke to Mary, and Mary was, How can this be? That's what they are talking. Though, yeah, they, they ask Michael. Michael, even bowling, you will know it's quick, everything is happening at the same time. It's only one place we saw that Gabriel slapped somebody, and that was a cry. 
says that uh, okay, you that me, you will not talk. That must be a slap till the boy is born. Will not talk. And there was war in heaven. Did you hear that Gabriel came out? And Michael is designed for that. Hallelujah. Just give God praise for his good thoughts and good plans towards us. Time, every time there are people who discover this truth, I'm telling you, heaven celebrates. One of the punishment of the mighty cherub, talking about the devil, is for us to rule over him. God created us to rule over him. You know, he's a proud guy. He's finer than you are in making, in creation. How can you come and rule over him? This thing, he calls you this thing. But that's the power of the mercy of God. God can use this thing. So he uses the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. God decided this thing you call this thing will rule over you. Just to punish you. Hallelujah. So you get it that the devil has no control over you. The devil is under your feet. The devil is under your feet. Even right now the Bible said the devil is defeated. And he is. He is. But he's counting on the ignorance of man to be able to operate. Once he knows that you know. We are driving the other day and we saw those people at the, at the traffic light stop one guy. Not that the guy passed the line. They said the guy was not wearing seatbelt. So they were arguing. They locked the time. Suddenly the guy realized and said, ah, it's not your work to check for seatbelt. See, they were about, they would have collected how many thousand. But as the guy remembers, ah, it's not short guy. I like short people. Short guy. He said, wait, it's not your right to check seatbelt. You are checking traffic light. So what's your business with seatbelt? So the short guy walk up to the tall guy. So I want to know your name. What's your name? As he said that, the guy knows say, You see from the body language of that guy that he hit him below the belt. So when somebody walks up to an officer and says, I want to know your name. They begin to know that you know something. It's even risky because they can decide to kill you for nothing. Guys say, what's your name? I want to know your name because I want to call. He, he, he picked up his phone. He wanted to make a call. The guy say, who you want to call? I know, say, you know, fear I don't catch the guy. So wait for the part two because we, we didn't know how he ended. <laughs> Light just show we walk up past. But I'm sure there will be a part two. I'm sure that guy left there. Without giving them nothing. Something about when you know. One day all those guy tax force caught my wife. She was going to the market and she saw some keke people. That's a bad spot. So he decided to follow the keke people to pass one. And those people saw the keke. They won't catch keke. As they saw her, boom, and they look at who they want to catch. They see it's a woman. So they rush her. Pam, they pam it. I know my wife. If she, if she was in her right, they can't do nada. <laughs> but having that consciousness, do you understand that you have broken the law? You will not have the boldness. That's why the Bible says, now you can come boldly because the price of sin has been paid. Jesus has restored us. So you can come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain grace. Come boldly. Come boldly. You are no longer guilty. Come boldly. You are no longer under judgment. The blood of Jesus has covered your sin. Come boldly. As long as devil remains, as long as devil remains in charge of the affairs of this world, there will never be peace and things will never turn out well. Because it's not the legitimate ruler here. He was not designed to handle things here. But he, he loves to be in charge. He lost power. That's what brought him down in the first place. He loved power. And that is why he keeps making sure to push his people to the place of power. 
And this is why we see all kinds of impunity in the corridors of power. He has so much influence over there because he knows that power is necessary to carry out any agenda. Power is necessary to carry out any agenda. Are they listening to me and see that this mic is moving? Are they listening to me? Jesus also knew that power was necessary to make any change, to effect any change, to push any agenda, to accomplish any goal. So he says to his disciples, he said, tarry you here. Don't go anywhere until you are endured with power. Then you can go out. You need power to recreate your world. I'm not talking just about spiritual power. I'm talking about power in all ramifications. You need financial power. You need academic power. You need spiritual power. You need business power to be able to effect any change. Christians must begin to be conscious of this truth that we need power. We must try to be the best at everything we do we must try to be the best at everything we do. Because that is where real influence lies. How many Christians are endorsing some great companies or establishment? How many Christian influencers do we have? How many Christian billionaires we even have? Even the Christian billionaires we have are timid. They don't know what to do. They don't know what they have. <laughs> what, what are they doing with it? We are all Christian using some telecommunication, but they can never sponsor any gospel thing. And those who are working there are Christians. And when you go there, they will be the first to tell you, ah, we cannot do that. Of course, what can they do? Because the owner does not know God enough. Imagine that the owner of that telecommunication is a Christian. That understands what we are talking about. How much influence he will pull. We saw on, 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 we saw on, on, on the social media how a particular secular artist slapped a particular pastor. Just because the pastor was preaching around the place he opened his bar. And he slapped, beat the man and videoed it live. And I thank God that one of my guys in Lagos called Testimony Jagger picked it up and was telling the guy, if you don't apologize in three days, what I would do to you will not believe it. And that's what we're talking about. There are so many Christians, but timidity. Very timid. We can't speak. We love life more than anything. You can't slap a Muslim a man like this. Everywhere go born. And the guy that slapped him, I think, is not a Christian. Just that somebody drew a, 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 a cartoon of Muhammad in a particular country abroad. Everywhere in other countries where there are Muslims began to boil. You cannot try it. The other day, you saw one Muslim woman came here and was shouting, telling them to bring me out. She, she does not realize the fact that this is a church where this she says you should bring me out. Can you even can you even cross where their mosque is? You'll be afraid to cross. Have you tried to steam a Muslim girl? Just seeing her with that thing. Every desire to know women will just leave you. Every desire. Nobody tries it. They are timid. You must be the best at everything we do. If, if we, for, because, see, we don't understand it. God, Jesus came, God gave us an assignment. Is in, in our Lord's prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the assignment. 
We have an assignment to bring the rulership, the way of doing things from heaven here on earth. We, we have the assignment to influence this world. But no, we are the one that is being influenced. The world is influencing us. We are the only set of people that have been influenced. So we are moving the other day. We are driving. A keke man will drive nonsense. You want to tell him why did you have like light? He will say, he will tell you, say, now church boss, you did drive. Oh. I said, the world has a way of intimidating us. You are not supposed to say anything. He's the one at wrong, but he doesn't want to say, don't say, ah, you, now church boss, you did drive. Oh. What does that mean? Exactly. You shouldn't talk in this place. We are in charge here. No. You know, there's a particular time Jesus told the, the disciples, say, you go and sell the things you have and buy, buy sword, buy knife. <laughs> you don't know it's in the Bible. Jesus said, this time is the time for dagger. Buy, say, hold it. No. Many times. You think the disciples of Jesus were that still? One time, the disciples of Jesus told Jesus, Philip and his brother, he said, I think it was James and John, he said, listen, let's call down fire already and kill these people. Why would they say that? They know God, Jesus has given them power. They had the power there. Jesus has initiated them into this power. They had it. And they were willing to use it. Say some people are doing anyhow. Let's call down fire. Jesus was begging them. Please, more than old one. They said, You too quiet, oh. Not a lie, this guy. You too quiet. If you, now we day here, if you continue like this, people will not take you serious. You know, many times they were they were the ones defending Jesus. People will come and tell them we want to see Jesus. They say, uh -huh. Wait till you want to see him first. At one time. Jesus had to beg them. Leave the little children to come now. Nah. But the king of God says, this bros G, you know like the way you say they run this matter. We can't, no be so go to run and for here. Did you see what happened at the, at the garden of uh, Gethsemane? Peter, just to let you know, these guys were no lilies. They know how to use the sword. Peter picked up. Peter, collect gone. Just imagine he's gone. Peter collect gun from soldier, shoot soldier. The Bible says he quickly took the sword of the man and cut off the ear. The ear, carry Jesus, not for ear. There would have been a serious fight if Jesus did not say them, tell Peter, put the sword back. This, this is the way I should go. They, they wouldn't have taken Jesus. It's not possible. That's when you know that Jesus' disciples, whew, They didn't know hear that many times they would have wanted to take Jesus, but they would not. For the fear of the people, the disciples, they would not. Be the best at everything you do because we are taking over. See, there is a taking over agenda that you must understand it. God wants to take over every area of this world. No place is, you know, exempted. God wants to rule over everything, whether it's banking, whether it's sports. God wants to rule every. I saw one celebrity that that drew Jesus on her, her whatever celebrity celebrity gown, and she was walking the red carpet, and they were trying to close it and close it, and she was opening. They wanted to close it, and she was ready to fight with them until they, they finally left it. They didn't want to see that image. The name of Jesus must be heard all over the place. The banner of the name of Jesus must be, you must, must fly it everywhere. You are in a bus, you want to start preaching, they want to shut you down. But they can be smooshing inside the bus, nobody will talk. You want to preach inside the class, they say, don't try it here. You want to pray in your office, they say, don't, don't pray in this office. But they can do all sorts. 
See, Jesus, when Jesus came, he showed us how this kingdom takeover is supposed to be. He was contrary to everything they were doing. Jesus was a radical. You better understand it. He turned everything that was in place before he came upside down. He turned it upside down. They said we preach only inside the church. He took the preaching inside the wilderness. <laughs> Everything. The people knew somebody came. After today, you're turning your world upside down. As a student, you're making a point. As a worker, you are making a point. Boldly declaring Jesus through your excellence in what you're doing. As a businessman, you're making the point. You know, some people are not proud to say I'm a Christian. I remember so many years back when I told one, one lady I was a pastor. She said, Why? You, 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 you quick become this pastor. What happened now? You quick become this pastor. In your mind, I'm missing out. Look at somebody like you be a pastor. You're missing out. Missing out on what? What exactly? The fine women of this world that never finishes. Eh? What exactly? Money. Who have the money? Amen. Cars? Is it travel? Is it travel? They will see you in the name of Jesus. If you are broke, listen, I wrote this and let me say this. Because I will soon, will soon close. Let me write this. Try to be the best in everything you do. We can't influence things or bring about any change if we are not in the top and the best places. You can't effect any change. You're working in the office. Think about being the man. Are you already the manager? Are you already the manager? Good. The next thing you'll be thinking about is owning that kind of stuff. You get what I'm saying? So that you, you, become, you become one of the, what they call it, the the whatever player in that field. One of those that make the rules. I cannot be anywhere and not be involved. I cannot be in anything and not get to the top. It's not possible. I've, I've never been anywhere and not get to the top, to the zenith. It's not possible. I, I just feel I'm wasting my time. I don't go trying to drag it, but I engage in excellence that I know will take me there. It is not possible. Anything I do, I try to do it to the best of my ability so that I can be at the top. When I joined MMM, how many of you did MMM? Dan -dan? I became one of the leaders. That's how. I entered the team, so say I do the exam. I do exam. <laughs> I do exam too, so I want to know what is going on. I joined Ultimate Whatever, the other Ultimate Wealth. I reach to the end. I mean, they match, they match people. You are going to get twenty thousand tomorrow. If you put me inside that place, I want to know it. I want to know what is there. I was in school. In school, I was at the top. In school, I was in the student union government. I was a class rep. I know the benefits. I was in. I was in student union government as the speaker. I was being paid by school. I was known in the school, not for evil, for good. We're about to do our school reunion. From amongst my set, I'm the only one my picture is in that flyer. After th they want to do 35 years reunion. They are putting go bongo go bongo go bongo go go people here. They put your apostle for them. They write a bishop. My chaplain called me. They send your picture. Some of my guys, they see, they say, ah, ah, ah. I 
went to Lagos, I went to Enugu, anywhere I went to, Port Harcourt, anywhere, Christ Embassy, anywhere, and get up there. Because you belong to the top. You will never know what you're missing if you're not at the top. You say, must everybody be in the, in the top? Some people say, why must you be the one that will be down? This is say that the poor you always have. It's a choice. To be the pe best in what you do, that way we will influence this world for Jesus. Just imagine you are that boy that, that, that makes $600,000 every show he goes. I saw one of them. They showed him. He went to one club the other night and he was carrying a big, I don't know if you saw it, a red bag full of money just to spend in one night. That should be you. Every time you see this like that, you say, this is my money. So, guy, okay, you are with my money. And you speak to that money. You're coming back to me. You're coming back to me. So, I will never be broke another day. If you are broke and you are sick and you are beggarly, how can you sell a powerful, prosperous God to anybody? They will tell you to first of all, use it. <laughs> let him help you. They let that God help you first. And, and you know, Jesus even said it. Jesus never asks us to go and say what we are not. He said, for you shall be witnesses. A witness is someone who knows what he's talking about firsthand. So if you must sell to somebody that God is a healer, they better know that you know what sound health is. You're going to sell to somebody, say, come and join me and follow my God. My God can make you rich. And they're already richer than you. See, that's why it's difficult sometimes for us to win some of these people to church. Because they feel we need what we are selling more than they need it. They look at the life of all the men that work with, with, with God in the Bible. The Bible say, at one time, a whole nation was begging Isaac to go. They say, you are, great. You are more powerful than us. Go. The way he was prospering. A whole nation, a particular king was begging Abraham. See, a particular king was under attack by five kings. And he could not save himself. The Bible says, and Abraham took 300 servants from his house. Kai, 300 people, they live for your house. I just read, they say one of the richest men in the world now is a one uh, Indian billionaire. He's living in 27-story building. That's his mansion. And he has over 200 and something uh, what are your, uh, servants. He didn't start it. Abraham did it with level. Three, imagine 300 people eating in your house. How much, how many baskets of a goosey they take they cook for them? 300 people. How many chicken do they chop? That was Abraham. So, and Abraham went and rescued the man from the hand of five kings. Abraham rescued with 300. Rescued the man. The man came bowing down to Abraham. Abraham was no king. He was just a prophet of God. He was just someone who the blessings of God was upon. He was begging the man. He said, take him, take him, take everything, take whatever you want. And Abraham said, if it is me and you, we'll say, oh, take everything I want. Yes, yeah, so you know, so I get 300 people. So we need to take God bless you. You understand? But Abraham, the Bible says, Abraham said, I will not take anything from you except the things my men will eat for now. Least tomorrow you said you made Abraham rich. Kai. I just won't help your life. Just want to help you because of Lot. Remember, I need I don't need anything from you. I pray that God will restore your color, God will restore your glory, God will restore your fortune. From today moving forward, you will no more be disadvantaged. Come on, bow down your heads and pray and say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know who I am. I will no longer be disadvantaged. All things are mine. 
All things are mine. Therefore, my family cannot be in shambles. All things are mine. Therefore, I will never be broke. All things are mine. Therefore, I'm getting that job. Therefore, my business is turning a better way. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. You just talk to him. All things are mine. All things are mine. Sound health is mine. Prosperity is mine. Marriage is mine. All things are mine. Peaceful home is mine. I belong to the top. 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 Just talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. In any area you know that things are not working the way. Say, because I am redeemed. Because I am redeemed. I refuse this situation to remain the same. Because I am redeemed. The cause in this family is destroyed because I am redeemed. The endless expectation of the whole world awaits my manifestation. I am making progress in the name of Jesus Christ. Long life is my portion in the name of Jesus. Increase is my portion in the name of Jesus. Talk to him. For you are glorious, you are worthy to be praised, you are the land upon the throne. 